Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about brush motors. And more specifically, we're gonna be looking at the KV value. How do we actually determine the KV value for a brush motor? And in addition, we're gonna be covering what the heck this ring is on the outside can of brushed motors. Now, if you know what the purpose of this ring is on the outside of this motor, leave it in the comment section below. Just make sure you put your answer there before we actually get to that part in the video. I will know if you're cheating or not. Now, this is a specific motor that comes from a Traxxas Summit. There's still a big place for brushed motors in our hobby, and they are being sold in ready to run vehicles still to this day. Now this is a brush motor from a vehicle that I mentioned. However, this motor is not. This is actually coming from a drill, probably very similar to the drill that we're gonna use in the video here today very shortly. So both of these motors actually look very identical in size and they may perform differently. And we're about to see, I don't have any specifications of the specific motor, so we have to go through that today as well. Now the big thing of KV and why we're actually gonna be talking about it in this video is it's still a very important value or specification that we need for brush motors as well. The problem is not a lot of brush motors offer this kind of information for us, making it kind of difficult to understand. The KV value is a lot more intuitive than these turn values that we get. So that's why we wanna go and see how we can determine KV for our motor. Let's set this up for ourselves, fire up the drill and measure KV for this motor. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna plug the positive lead from the motor onto the positive lead of our multimeter. You're gonna need a multimeter as well as a drill to go and do this. And if you also have the capabilities, you probably want either a brushless motor or a tachometer. And we'll talk about that very shortly as to why you would need either one of those components. So once we have our positive lead on, I'm gonna go and take the negative lead here and attach that as well. So our negative lead goes to the negative lead of the motor. Now the last thing we wanna do is connect our drill to our motor. All we're doing here is inserting the shaft of the motor into the chuck of the drill, tightening it down nice and tight. And then we can even spin it up just to make sure that it's not going to be vibrating as we spin it at high RPMs. And from there, the last thing we do here is set up our multimeter to read DC voltage. This is the biggest difference from measuring a brushless motor, which requires requires AC voltage when you're figuring out KV versus our brush motor here, we need to be set at DCV, DC voltage. From here, next thing I can do is fire up this motor with the drill and see what kind of values we're measuring. There you go, we're measuring about 0.88 volts. Now, the big thing that we don't yet have is RPM. We need to know the RPM of this motor, what we're spinning it at. There's a couple ways to do it. As I mentioned, you could use a tachometer and you can measure the actual speed of the drill. All you need to do is place your reflective tape here on the chuck of the drill and you'd be able to resemble a propeller that these tachometers would be able to measure up at. So that's one way you can do it or you can do what I've done already and I've connected up my drill to a brushless motor and then I've used the frequency value here on my multimeter to go and get the frequency. I place this onto the radiocontrolinfo.com website to calculate RPM from a frequency value knowing the pull count of my brushless motor. We covered this in a previous video so I don't want to get into too much detail with that. Once you have the RPM, this one spun at about 1200 RPM. From there I take the RPM 1200 and I divide it by our voltage of 0.88 thereabouts that we got and I get the KV value. So I'm gonna do that here on a calculator very quickly. And we get a KV of about 1360 for this specific motor. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing here on our other motor. We got 0.88 volts on this one. Let's see what we get to the more factory motor that came out of a drill. Now that we have our motor plugged in and we still have our multimeter connected up, and set to DC voltage, we can spin up this motor and see what kind of voltage we're getting from this one. So I'll do that, spin it up to full power here. So 
So I'm getting about 1.27 volts here. We go and take our 1200 and we divide it by 1.27 and we're getting a KV value of 945 RPM per volt. And of course, KV is unloaded. That's the unloaded value that we get. So now I know that the actual drill motor here has a lower KV value than our motor that came from a Traxxas Summit. So some interesting things there that probably the only difference between these motors is the wind that's inside. One might be a 10 turn versus a 12 turn or whatever it is. I don't know the actual winds that are used on these 700 series motors. But nonetheless, we know that one can produce more RPM every volt that we apply to it. Now the next thing that I want to do is talk about the actual ring that is placed on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this ring off of this motor and then we're going to repeat the process of measuring our KV value for the original motor that we ended up measuring which is from that Traxxas Summit. So give me a second and I'll pull this off. All right I pulled the ring off of our Summit motor and now what we're going to do is make sure we got all the leads connected correctly, which looks okay. We're still plugged in our multimeter and we still have DC voltage here selected. Firing up the drill is next step and let's do that. What kind of voltage do you expect us to get here? So let's find out. So there we have it. We're getting about 0.73 volts. So that's a very big difference between that and the other previous measurement that we had, which was about 0.88. So if we take our 1200 RPM and we divide it by our 0.73 volts, we're getting now a KV value of 1640. Very big difference considering we're moving up now in KV by quite a bit. So now it brings us to the question as to what's happening with that ring. Why are we getting different values when we pull the ring up? Are we getting better performance now that we have the ring out? Are we losing performance? What's the story behind that? What is this ring? Well, this ring is actually known for being a flux ring. And in the hobby industry, a lot of people would refer to this as a torque ring. And there is a reason as to why people would refer this to a torque ring. And you may recall because of the KV value change that we got, that something to do with torque is happening when we go and place this onto our motor. So well, the way that this works, and I do want to even show it to you, is when we go and have this ring placed onto the motor, we're changing the magnetic field from the exterior side of the motor. Now what I want to do is I want to show you something. If I go and take a bunch of paper clips and I spread it over the table here, and then I go and place the motor above it, watch what happens to those paper clips as we go and bring the motor close to it. They all kind of, you know, cling onto the motor. I now literally have all the paper clips that were on the table clinging to this motor. Now the only explanation as to why this is possible is because the magnets that are found on the can of the motor has some magnetism that is leaking out outside of the motor, which is essentially being wasted. This is a complete waste of magnetism. And where there's a waste of magnetism, there must be some loss in efficiency. And that's absolutely true. If we go and place this back on the ring, back onto this motor, let's see what happens to the paperclip idea here. We now have the torque ring placed back onto our motor, and we're gonna go and place that motor right above those paperclips again and see if we notice any difference. So I'm gonna go down to those paper clips and see if we get any attachment. So we do get some paper clips here attaching themselves to the magnet, but it's very difficult to get all of them. So I'm trying to pick up all of them so that we can get a good idea as to what the difference is, and it's not possible. We'll do this one more time. We'll bring the motor really close to the paper clips, and there they start to cling, and as we pull up, we can't get all of those paper clips now attaching themselves and clinging to the can of this motor. What this essentially shows us is that this ring is preventing some of the magnetic leakage that occurs outside of the can of this motor. And if we're able to capture that magnetic field, we can utilize it within our motor. The last question that we have here is why is this ring known as a torque ring? Well, one of the things that we know from KV is that KV is equal to one divided by KT where KT is our torque constant. To put this very simplistically, as KV goes down or gets lower, the KT value must get higher, it increases. 
So like our example, if our KV value goes from the 1600 or so that we measured here today down to about 12 or 1300, whatever this was measured at, we are going to see an increase in the KT value, meaning that we're gonna get more torque out of this motor for every amp that we draw from the motor. So that's important. This is why it's known as a torque ring within the hobby industry. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. I hope you were able to understand how to measure the KV value of our brush motors definitely a lot more simple in the calculation for brush motors versus brushless motors we only need rpm divided literally by the voltage that we measure and we get our kv value from that as always like the video if you do don't forget to hit that sub button so that i can see you in that next video thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you in the next one one last tip make sure you turn off your equipment so that your batteries don't die i found this out the hard way